Swan Gans catheterization is a diagnostic test used to determine whether any hemodynamic or blood flow related abnormalities exist in the heart and lungs. The procedure involves the insertion of a pulmonary artery catheter into the right side of the heart and into the arteries that lead to the lungs. The pulmonary artery catheter has a balloon tip on the end. The balloon allows the catheter to be carried by the flow of your blood to help the catheter move smoothly through the blood vessels and into the right chamber of the heart. The procedure itself is sometimes called right heart catheterization. This is because it can measure the pressure of your blood as it flows through the right side of your heart. It measures the pressure at three different places, the right atrium, pulmonary artery and pulmonary capillaries. These measurements can be used to figure out the amount of oxygen in the blood of the right portion of your heart. It's also used to figure out how much blood flows out of your heart overall. The pulmonary catheter is generally inserted into one of three veins, the right internal jugular vein, left subclavian vein and femoral veins. Right internal jugular vein is located in the neck and is the shortest, most direct path to the heart. The left subclavian vein is located under the clavicle, or collarbone. It's a large vein on the left side of the upper chest area. The femoral veins are located in the groins. Pulmonary catheter is used to measure right atrial pressure. Pulmonary artery pressure, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, cardiac output and oxygen saturations in the right heart chambers. The Swan Gans balloon flotation catheter was introduced in 1970. It was introduced by Dr. Swan and Dr. Gans. They then named their invention Swan Gans catheter. Swan Gans catheterization is performed to evaluate heart failure, heart function following a heart attack, shock, pulmonary edema, or fluid in the lungs, congenital heart disease. Post surgery monitoring of people who've had open heart surgery, valvular heart disease, such as leaky heart valves, cardiomyopathy, and pulmonary arterial hypertension. The red port is the balloon port. It is used to inflate the balloon in the distal pulmonary artery, and comes with a locking guard and a pre-calibrated 1.5 milliliters syringe. Do not replace the syringe with a regular syringe. The yellow port is the distal port. It is positioned in the pulmonary artery and attached to a pressure line and measures pulmonary artery pressure and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. The white port is positioned in the right atrium. It is used for administration of IV fluids or venous blood sampling. The blue port is the proximal injectable port located in the right atrium and is used for CVP monitoring. Intravenous fluid may also be administered through this lumen and venous blood samples may be obtained. The thermistor is a temperature sensor that is positioned in the pulmonary artery and is used to measure the patient's core blood temperature. It is also used in calculating cardiac output. The thermal filament is used to calculate and display continuous cardiac output on the monitor. The thermal filament connector attaches to the optical module for displaying continuous mixed venous oxygen saturation. The Swan Gans measures continuous cardiac output and cardiac index. Cardiac output is the amount of blood being pumped by the heart per minute, measured in liters per minute. Continuous cardiac output is obtained by the thermodilution method, 
which is a pulmonary catheter that contains a thermal filament 10 cm in length. In addition to the thermistor located near the distal tip, the thermal filament is in proper position when it is located in the right ventricle. The filament emits 7.5 watts of thermal energy into the surrounding blood. The thermistor defects the changes in blood temperature, and the continuous cardiac output computer plots thermal curves for calculation of cardiac output. The cardiac index is obtained by factoring the body surface area in order to normalize the value of the cardiac output. The normal cardiac index is 2.2 to 4 liters per minute. The swan gens measures systemic vascular resistance and pulmonary vascular resistance. The systemic vascular resistance measures the afterload or resistance of the left ventricle. Afterload is defined as the resistance the blood in the ventricle must overcome to force the valves open and eject contents into circulation. Normal values are 800 to 1200 dynes. The pulmonary vascular resistance measures the afterload or resistance of the right ventricle. Normal pulmonary vascular resistance values are less than 250 dynes. The swan gens measures continuous mixed venous oxygen saturation. Measurement of mixed venous oxygen saturation provides information about global oxygen delivery, uptake, and cellular use. On average, the body uses about 25% of the oxygen delivered in the arterial blood during a resting time. Normal mixed venous oxygen saturation ranges are 60 to 75%. Mixed venous oxygen saturation consists of the following factors, cardiac output, arterial oxygen saturation, oxygen consumption and hemoglobin. The swan gens measures central venous pressure. Central venous pressure is the reflection of the pressure in the right side of the heart. The normal value is 2 to 6 mm of mercury. Central venous pressure monitors the fluid status of the patient. Materials needed to insert a swan gans catheter, 500 milliliters of normal saline. Pressure device pressure tubing with attached transducers. Transducer holder with C-clamp. IV pole. Swan gans catheter and introducer. Swan Gans Insertion Setup A septic technique is mandatory during preparation and management of the fluid-filled system to prevent contamination of the vascular system. Number 1. Gather all the materials. Number 2. Attach the transducer holder with C-clamp to the IV pole with the transducer level at the phlebostatic reference point. Number 3. Remove pressure tubing from package, then tighten all connections to ensure sterility and security. Number 4. Open the normal saline and insert the drip chamber in the IV bag. Make sure the roller clamp is closed. Number 5. Insert the normal saline bag into the pressure device. Increasing the pressure to 300 mm of mercury. There is a green mark you can see in the pressure device bag if you are using the pressure device bag. Number 6. Open the roller clamp and pull the pigtail for each transducer, assuring that all the air is removed and the system is completely primed. Number 7. Attach pressure cables, and ensure that the lines are zeroed and prepared for swan gans insertion. 
You are now prepared for insertion of the Swan GANS catheter into the patient. Number 8. The health provider will place an introducer into the patient. Number 9. The provider will then be prepared for the Swan GANS insertion. The pressure tubing is attached to the corresponding color-coded port. Number 10. The pigtail is pulled and the catheter is flushed, removing all air. Number 11. The balloon is then tested for integrity. Number 12. The catheter is then inserted via the introducer. The pulmonary artery catheter has a balloon tip on the end. The balloon allows the catheter to be carried by the flow of the blood to help the catheter move smoothly through the blood vessels and into the right chamber of the heart. Number 13. You can then see the different waveforms depending on the catheter's location. Number 14. After completion of the swan insertion, a chest x-ray is done to confirm the placement of the catheter.